Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver Sparkles and um, I've got a tutorial for you today. We're gonna make this, i um, not quite sure what I should call it. It's part folder and part like journal insert with lots of fun space um, to work in. Um, the front and back covers open like envelopes with wonderful places to tuck in some extra writing paper um, or other treasures. So, um, yeah, that's the prototype. So, if you want to make something like this, I hope you'll stick around and um, watch me um, as, as we craft together. So, we're going to set our prototype over here to the side so it's there if I need it, which I probably will. Um, and I was using up, I had some pages left over from a Stamperia scrapbook paper pack and just wanted to um, use up some of the papers. And then I decided I really liked this project and thought I'd do a tutorial. So um, I've, I've had this one sitting here for a while and made one little project with one, I think one sheet of paper. Um, one of my daughters loves cats and um, so I try to find cat themed things at times. Um, so we're gonna use some of the paper from this pack. I've already cut a few of the kitty cats um, or the circle pieces out um, so I'd be somewhat ready, but most of this is going to be in real time because I haven't done much to prepare. Um, and I didn't cut this kitty out because I was trying to decide about the tail and how I might use that one. So that's something for me to think about. <laughs> um, but there were these great um, rectangle um, tag cards too that I cut out and I'm going to hopefully use. So Lots of um, kitty cat inspiration. This one's called um, Orchids and Cats. So the first thing um, that we do need to do is to pick out um, a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And I think I'm gonna use this one. Um, hopefully I can remember everything that I did. So to, to get the main fold on our um, cover and to make those envelope folds is we do need to fold this piece of paper diagonally in half, okay? Now you can put it on your scoreboard and get, get a nice score line um, or you can do what I did and just wing it. So, um, I've folded it in half, and now I'm gonna be going to that center line with my corner. So get it as best you can, right up there to the center. And I am using my bone folder to make sure I have a nice crease. And um, so you're gonna fold um, the, these two corners in, and then you're going to flip it over and hold it up like this, like so. I think that's what I did. No, that's not what I did. <laughs> okay, so let's start over. So we folded it in half. Now what we need to do is bring this corner. Wait, that's not right. See guys, this is why you write out instructions so you can remember what you did. Um, when it's time to craft. Let's see, how did I, oh, how did I do that? Here, let's go ahead and fold all four corners in. No, that's not what I did. Oh, I know what I did. Guys, you're gonna laugh at me and I'm so sorry. So, you fold them in and then you turn it over. Okay, and then we're going to fold it in half and match up these corners. Now it's coming back to me. I hope that didn't confuse you too much. 
Um, in fact, I'll grab another piece of paper and we'll do this again so that um, you can you can see it without my mess up. So then when you fold these over, it literally looks like an envelope. Make a little overhang so that you, um, if you tried to line it up, you'd, you'd have a gap here and you don't want that. So just bring it over just a little and so that these line up and match, okay? All right, so now that I've thoroughly confused everyone, um, I'm going to do it again. We'll do it again. Um, it won't hurt to have another one. So let me find another piece of paper. Um, I think this would be a pretty one. And then we can choose which one we, we actually want to make our folder with. Every, I love every piece of this paper. All right. So again, 12 by 12 piece of paper. Fold it in half diagonally and try to be precise if you can. The more precise you are, the neater your project will be at the end. All right, unfold it. And then you're going to take one corner up to the center fold line. Take that corner right up to that crease, okay? And then turn it and do the same. Okay, so now when you have these two creases turned over, you're just gonna turn it over. And I think a good way to remember is with the point up. And then we are going to fold to match those, those pointies, pointy pieces. Now, one thing I did not spend a lot of time looking at was the pattern of my paper, and I love those flowers. Let's see, hopefully without confusing everyone, if we can get some of those showing on the front. I'm not sure if it's possible. Because I think the um, pockets might be covering up. Oh. Well, when we open it up, we'll see them. So I'm going to leave it this way. So again, now we want to fold down to make it look like an envelope with a little bit of an overlap. Get it as straight as you can. And then this one you want to match. Because this is the cover of your little journal or insert, whatever you want to call it. Okay, pretty, right? All right, now the other thing that I do is I trim the corners so that there's not an overhang, okay? Now, that being said, I think I'm gonna go back to my original and I'm gonna craft um, yeah, I think I'm going to do this one. All right. Um, and again, if you want to measure and draw a line, um, you, you can. Again, up to you. All right. So, the way I did my original was when it opened... Um, I have the flap opening this way and the back one opening this way. Now, we could be different and have it open this way, right? Oh, but then the whole book would open. I don't think I like that. I think I'm going to keep it like the original. Okay? All right. So, one thing that I did too that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is I wanted lines um, for journaling. And so I found a piece in the original paper pack and I cut out a piece and I stuck it down. What it also did is it gave us some more thickness and sturdiness, which is great, especially for a standalone. But if we're gonna use it as an insert, it, it, it does get a little bulky. So again, a personal choice. I think 
um, for right now, um, for time's sake, I may not line this one, and I may look at adding some pockets or something a little different. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we do. I, I may add it in later. Um, but that would certainly keep it a little bit thinner. Okay, but it still feels good. This is this is good good scrapbook paper card stock. It's not a thin thin paper. Okay, so now this is going to be our front, I think. Hmm. Nope, this is because I don't want that. I think I like the way those envelopes are. So this will be the front. Now we're gonna um make the flippy foldy insert and I went ahead and cut a piece of the paper. Um, what did I do? I cut it to almost seven and a quarter and it's still the 12. No, did I cut it down? I cut it down a little bit. No, it's 12 inches long. All right. Now I will not remember what I did. I just sort of started folding on the original. So, I do like this bird, and I would like this bird in some way to be prominent. There's a lot of pattern going on there. Okay, so it's someplace we'll, we're going to see this bird, whether it's on the front or when we open up in a fold somewhere. Okay, and then... Let's see, we're gonna fold this one over pretty much to where it overlaps. I hope I'm on camera, I'm not paying attention. And then we're gonna bring it back to make that nice flippy piece, okay? All right. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, let's see if we turn it the other way, what happens. Okay. I think this is the, the thing with all these pattern papers, is there's so many different things that it can do. All right, and I did not fold this the best. Just straightening it up. It's just paper. Um, we're gonna just add some decorations so that this doesn't um, all look exactly the same. But we're gonna open it up and have that beautiful bird, which is gonna make me happy. It's like a surprise. Okay, and we definitely one thing you do want to make sure, of course, is that you fold it so it's not wider than your cover. Um, I think you can see on this one, I made it even a little more narrow than I did on this one. But now we have this to open, and then we have this to open, and then a back page. Okay, now, one of the things, if you guys have looked at my work or follow me, you know that I like to um, distress ink the edges of my projects. And now I'm gonna have to crawl under my desk because I dropped my uh, sponge applicator. <laughs> Always something. Okay, so I think today I am just using my standby uh, Tim Holtz walnut. It's called walnut. And I'm gonna real quick, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on camera inking. I can always go back later and add more, but I'm gonna get a little bit of ink on here so I can see how it's gonna look. And I do, on this project, turn it inside and out so I get all the creases with some distress ink on them. And it also just helps the paper conform to being folded back and forth this way, which is nice. I'm just 
put a little bit on each of the edges. That makes it stand out. So, um, I don't know where you are all in the world, but I live in Virginia and we're having interestingly unseasonably warm weather, which I'm happy about because I just got back from a February vacation. My husband and I took what we try to say is an annual trip to Florida in February. I have family there, um, but we go and stay on the beach and see a little family and a lot of relaxation. So we just got back late, last night and um, I'll be back to my real job, my real, my, or my day job, we'll say, um, Monday. So I still have a long weekend to enjoy. All right. So we got the inside part. So I hope wherever you are, you're having maybe some nice winter weather is where I was going with that. Um, I think it's supposed to be pretty cold and rainy and maybe even a touch snowy here tomorrow. But today it's in the 60s and um, it's a little crazy, but we will take it. A little bit easier to, to come home when we've been in 70 and 80 degree weather and wearing flip flops um, to, to, to ease in slowly to the back to the cold weather. So, all right, almost done. This is why I don't usually do a lot of ink distressing on camera. And honestly, feel free to fast forward if watching me do the ink isn't your favorite thing. Um, but if you're crafting along with me, hopefully you're inking your edges too. And you don't mind the extra time, so. All right, I think we're gonna call this about done for now. And let's see, let's see how we did. All right. bit uneven somehow. I think when I got flustered when I couldn't remember how to fold it, I wasn't being very careful. But we're going to have to let that go. Okay. All right. So there's our front. Now I'm going to show you, um, many of you, if you've been junk journaling or, or making journals, um, I'm sure know how to stitch. I'm just going to show you how I do a really quick and easy three-hole pamphlet stitch. Um, and if you haven't done this before, hopefully this will be helpful. Um, so you need something to pierce the hole or to make holes to pierce the paper and you um, will need a big eyed needle and um, some thread. Now you can use, um, I'm, I'm going to just use some embroidery floss today. Um, you can, I sometimes use, you know, waxed string so it doesn't slip. There, there's lots of options, but um, embroidery floss works just fine, um, or other threads that you have, okay? Um, all right, so it's a three hole, and um, I'm going to put a hole. I'm, I'm measuring the shorter page. Um, obviously, I don't want a hole up here where it's not going to adhere to anything, so I've got Got about 18 centimeters. I'm going to do centimeters because that's easier to figure out my half point. <laughs> so nine centimeters should be about right in the middle. And then I'm going to come in about one and a half 
centimeters top and bottom for my other two holes. And then I just take it and I am careful because it looks better if my holes aren't all crazy and hopefully they will end up being in the crease. Um, yep, there we go. Now I didn't mention I do um, use clips or uh, paper clips or binder clips or something um, to hold the pages so they don't move. Um, and this is especially important when you are doing lots of pages. You know, you're, you're actually putting a signature together for a large journal. Um, I usually give myself about three times the height of the pages of thread. That, that's plenty. But isn't so sure you could get by with a little less but I just don't like making my life difficult okay so you always are going to start um if now you you could have your ties on the outside but if you remember on my prototype mine ties on the inside I did these cute little circles on the ed ends um so for that look you start on the inside. So um, always make sure you hold on to the tail so it doesn't pull through. Okay, so I went in and now I'm on the outside and I find my hole and I come back up. And if it hasn't wiggled, <laughs> it should find the hole for you. So now I'm through now we're gonna skip the center and go down to the bottom hole and push it back through to the outside okay it looks like this at this point and now we're gonna come back up through the middle now let me just pull it through now you want before you tie to have one string on either side of the center Okay, I encourage you to always check the back, make sure it looks the way you want it to before you start tying. Um, and I do one, two, and then I switch them to help lock the knot. I don't know if that really does anything, but someone told me one day that it did, so I do it that way. And I'm gonna trim that just a little bit. Okay, and you can always, um, again add some little paper decorations you can tie a bow you can add some beads you could you could have made them really long and had different decorations uh again whatever you like and whatever look you're going for so i'm gonna put the needle up so i don't lose it okay so let's see what we're looking like now this flap All right, I think it's looking pretty. And now it's just the fun part. We get to decorate and decide if we want some tuck spots and what else we would like to have for our insert. And we have lots of pretty items to choose from in this paper pack. So I'm gonna go to some of these that I've already cut out a little bit. Let's see what we have. Um, I definitely think I want a kitty cat on the front. And um, again, I was going to point out on this first one, I was really going to town and wanted it to be really thick and sturdy. And so I lined um, the insides and I lined the flaps. Um, and I added the circles. This one, I actually have one, two, three circles. So, um, I think it feels good. And as a standalone, it definitely doesn't feel quite as, you know, it, it just has some heft to it. But after I was done, I was kind of wishing I had not added so many layers because I was planning to use this as a, um, tuck inside a larger journal. So kind of think through what you're gonna use it for. I'm gonna leave this one. It still feels nice and sturdy, but not quite as thick is the point. Okay, so 
we're going to use this kitty cat here. I'm going to look through the paper and find um, either a pretty pattern where we can punch some more circles to just decorate it up some. Um, or I um, may just do the single kitty. Let's see. Um, one thing I'm going to do different for this, this one is I'm also going to not make it a loose ribbon. I'm, I'm actually going to attach the ribbon. So I will um, show you how we do that as well. Here's an idea that I have. I've got this pretty butterfly. I'm wondering if my... Well, shoot, that doesn't work, does it? And that one, I have the same problem if I try to cut into it um, to get to it. So I'm going to save those. And um, we're going to think about that. Um, and I really like these... Uh, they look like little bookmarks. Um, and I'm probably gonna cut those out and we're gonna tuck those inside. I think the, the cards that came with the kit, as lovely as they are, are a little too wide for this project. So these are probably going to get um, saved for, for a, a project down the road. <laughs> All right, so. I am going to go ahead and ink around this circle. This is the back, and I'm gonna put this one on the back. I like bringing a little bit of that yellow in um, because I think I'm gonna use maybe pink and yellow ribbons. I'm, I'm not sure, I'll show you here in a minute what I have to choose from. So let me get my glue out. It's always so hard when you're using double-sided paper that's so pretty. Look how pretty this pattern paper is that I'm having to glue down and I won't ever get to see again. Um, that's one of the reasons these beautiful paper packs sometimes tend to sit. Um, because I have a hard time um, letting or, or, or gluing down the pieces I'm not going to get to see again. I do think I'm going to want another circle to reinforce the um, edge here. So I'm going to have to decide what size I want. And I'm just going to have to pick. Ooh, I just found something fun. Look, all these that I can fussy cut out. You'll be able to see, you can really just keep going with this project and have lots and lots of pretty um, embellishments. Hmm. All right, let me see what I'm gonna do here. I think I am going to get a pretty orchid. I'm going to walk to the center like that. All right, and we'll just put a little ink around the edges. I don't usually do the back first, but felt right. Now, one thing I'm not the best at is not making a mess with my glue, but I obviously don't want this glued down. So I'm trying to be careful that I don't um, have my glue be sloppy. All right, so I'm definitely gonna need a circle or something here since I have that one overlapping. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have to think through this because I'm gonna do some, uh, like I said, a closed ribbon, or not a loose ribbon, I, I want it attached. Um, I think that yellow is a little more than what I want. Take the yellow out of the mix. Hmm. Of course, it, now that I take it away, I miss it. Maybe a little piece of yellow. 
um, this is the part of crafting that always takes me a lot of time because I like to, um, I, I like all the embellishments and the, and the decorating and um, you can spend hours and hours, <laughs> which isn't a bad thing, but a lot of fun. Okay. And of course, um, this is my hand dyed. Um, it's actually seam binding and I dye it to get these fun different colors and to get it all crinkly like this. It's super easy. There's videos on YouTube about how to do that. Um, and then I usually, because I just like how it looks in a pile, <laughs> I'm going to use this to see how long I need it. Um, it does sometimes get, get all tangled up. Oh, good. I had enough. All right. This was from my original one, and I just did one piece of pink for that one. But here, I think I'm going to be fancy. And we're going to do a piece of pink and a piece of yellow. Just to be different. Now, what I do need to do is make sure, even though I used that one to help me, that it's about right. Yep, and it is. Okay, so without it being a loose closure, what we have to do is adhere it in some way, and then I'm going to cover it with this cut. I may just do the cat over. And then when you open it, um, the you, you don't have to keep up with the ribbons. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to do this. And the way I'm going to do this today is I'm going to use um, some score tape. It's um, a nice quality two-sided tape. I use it a lot when I'm making books um, for covers and those types of things. And um, you're, nothing's gonna go anywhere with this stuff. So I'm gonna put one piece down and I am kind of burnishing it to make sure it's stuck really well. And I'm gonna do one of my ribbons right onto it. And then, I'm going to do another piece right on top of that one. And hopefully I left enough on the end to tie it. Um, we'll just stick that one down. Okay. And now I have the kitty cat. It's going to be here. And again, see, I don't need glue on this. these pieces or it'll get, make a big mess. So where I need glue is to this edge, about like that. And then I'll add some extra after I kind of see how I did. I just lift it up. And I go to there, and I constantly check to make sure I haven't, you know, I haven't made a big mess. Okay. And again, um, if you've watched my videos, I've shared with you my favorite white wet glue. But I'll show you again since I didn't get asked that. I use um, the art glitter glue, and. Um, just put it in different containers to, um, you know, to squeeze it out to get a nice thin line. Um, but again, it dries quickly. It doesn't make as big of a mess, and your your project nothing's going to go anywhere. Whoops! See, <laughs> and if you get extra, you're gonna something's going to stick to it. Okay, so let's see how this is going to look. 
when we're done. And have a kitty cat bow. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. And you can tie it more to the center um, if you like. And you can still see that there's a kitty cat there. Okay. And now, when you go to open your insert, <laughs> you just, you know, move the ribbons to the side and it's okay. All right. All right. I think that works. And we have this back here. Okay. Um, let's go to the inside. So on the original prototype, there was lined paper here um, to encourage journaling. Um, I think I want to cover some of these pieces, um, maybe with just some plain um, copy dyed paper. I'm gonna leave this because it's beautiful. I might do a pocket here like I did in the original one so we can tuck some things, but I don't wanna cover up that bird. Um, and I think that's my plan. So I am going to grab a piece of coffee dyed paper. I did not have that ready, so I hope I didn't fade away too much <laughs> when I walked away and grabbed my paper. All right, so this is right at seven and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna cut the height of my paper, or actually I'm gonna tear it, to six and three quarters. So I still have an edge of the pretty patterned paper, um, but it fits. So I'm gonna just use my regular metal ruler here to tear the paper. I'm not lined up. <laughs> My paper's not straight. Um, and it'll give it um, a, some, a torn edge that'll pick up some ink because of course we're gonna ink it. <laughs> um, but not, not super jagged or anything. All right, this one I'm just gonna eyeball. Okay, and then we're gonna place this here. Um, and this will give someone uh, that uses this some space to journal on. Now I may still add one of those, like cut out one of those fussy cuts to give it a little bit of a, of a dimension. Um, or not dimension, a decoration. A little touch of something extra and it also as pretty as the pattern paper is it um, breaks up some of the busyness okay I'm gonna do another piece to right here um, Paper tearing is one of my favorite things. Um, you can obviously cut this with your scissors if you don't like to tear paper or don't like the torn look, um, or put it on your um, paper cutter or your guillotine cutter and just cut it to the right size. Um, I use all the techniques when I'm crafting. Um, but I just thought I would like to have a little bit of a torn edge today. Um, some people even will get the rulers, again, that make a really, you know, ragged decorative edge, but you still have a little more control than just with a finger tear. Um, so again, personal preference. Let's see. Ooh, this piece looks like it is the perfect size for one of these panels. And I'm going to leave for right now that, and we're going to go to the inside of this one. Let's see how it turned 
seeds out. So um, I made a, a goal for, for my um, crafting business this year that I was going to do more tutorials because I get lots of requests for how did you make that and I'd love a video. Um, and um, commit a little more time to my YouTube channel. Um, I've done got a pretty good presence on Pinterest and on Instagram and I um, have made some great friends on both of those platforms forms, virtual friends. Um, and now I'm, I'm trying to spend some time here on YouTube. So, um, I think everybody, when you watch their videos, they're always asking you to please, um, subscribe and please like and comment. So, um, I will do the same. Uh, it's a little hard asking, um, for people, uh, to do that. It feels, it feels awkward at times, but, I will say I really appreciate your support and if you don't mind I would love if you were to um, subscribe to my channel here and actively uh, watch my videos and um, let me know what you think. Um, I love um, my handmade business and crafting and sharing it with others. I feel like um, art and creativity is one way we're able to take care of ourselves mentally, or some of us anyway, emotionally, right? I know art and crafts aren't for everyone, but um, there's a hashtag I use a lot, Art Heals, and I really believe that. I think it's a great outlet and a way to express ourselves. And if I can help um, other individuals on their little journey in life by sharing things that I love, then, then I certainly want to do that. Um, and your support helps me be able to do that. So thank you. Um, okay, I think this is starting to come together. Um, I'm going to go back to that sheet that we had with all these little kitty cats and orchids. They're so pretty. Um, let's see what we can find to put here. I think that little kitty would look very happy uh, added to that fun little um, pull open on our flippy. So I'm going to have to come up with a name for this thing. Uh, it's always one of the things um, when I make something and then I have to come up with a title and a caption and describe it. And I'm like, well, it's a flippy flappy folder um, for, for journaling. <laughs> A lot of my things get called um, journal insert or um, journal tags. <laughs> so if you guys have ideas um, for names of some of my projects or the things that I'm making that you think would be good names when I do something similar in the future, let me know. Because that is one of um, my challenges uh, is, is deciding what to call everything. Um, Let's see. The nice thing about these that I'm cutting out, you know, I was telling you my woes about the two-sided paper. Is this is actually the back of the packaging. <laughs> so when I glue it down, I'm not missing out on anything. All right. Now this tail could easily get folded up and messed up. So we're going to have to be very careful as we're gluing where to place this little kitty. All right, and I think down here, a little bit at an angle, and she'll fit just fine. And not to get bent and messed up as we go. Whoops, see, angle, Pam, angle. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now I've got another little kitty cat. I like all the birds and the butterflies that came with this one too because those are 
also things if you look at my work and, and have followed me, um, you know that I really enjoy. So I think I'm going to cut out this orchid that has some of that yellow in it. Again, as a nod to my yellow ribbon. Um, usually when I'm planning a video, um, I try to, I try to take time and think through and have my embellishments chosen. Um, and if they require fussy cutting like this, to do that ahead of time so the video doesn't get to be so long. Um, but today I just kind of dove right in. Um, and it also gives you an idea of um, when I'm first making a project, this really is how I do it. I kind of go back and forth and I try different things and um, sometimes I make mistakes and I start over and sometimes I put something away and think, no, that's not quite right. And then later I pull it right back out because I changed my mind. <laughs> so again, this is the, the fun part. And um, you could use the exact same papers that I have in your project. It could look completely different because you might choose some of the other items. Um, I'm just gonna put this on one of these. It takes up some of the journaling space, but I think it looks pretty. I'm gonna put it here on the back. There's still plenty of room to write, but it brings some of that yellow back in that I was talking about earlier. And again, the, the decorating and all of that really is optional and based on, on what you like. Um, all right. I do want to make a um, pocket. Um, and again, we can use different papers for the pocket. Um, I think I want a little more contrast. And what I'm trying to find are those cards that I told you were too big. I don't know where I put them. Because even though they are too big, here they are, to tuck inside, they, there might be one that is a nice design. Oh, there's a, that same orchid, but a little bit smaller. Um to make a, a pocket. So let me just look and see. And some of the um, images are a little bit smaller scale on these. Hmm. Let me see what's on the other side up here. All right, now we could, oh, that kitty cat is a little too wide. I like that orchid too. It's hard to decide what I'm going to cut up. <laughs> All right. I think I have decided and I'm going to make kind of an organic tux. Well, it's the exact same orchid though. Oh, be decisive, Pam. Here we go. We're going to use this one and that'll leave the kitty cat, um, as an option to use later. All right, we're gonna bring this in. So I am gonna cut the top of that orchid off. Um, all right, so on the original, let me remind you what we did. Um, I did a, you know, very straight line angled corner pocket. This time, because I'm going to use this orchid, cut it down a little bit. All right, 
and it's just gonna be a tuck spot. And it doesn't cover up too much of the pretty paper that I like on this page, but it gives us a place to add um, some tags or journal cards or something. Um, so just I'm putting glue on the two sides and I'm going not quite to the crease. Get it straight. Um, I did like the little circles that I put on the original, so I'm gonna cut a few for us to add to these strings too. Again, a super easy um, little extra that um, doesn't take a lot of time, but gives you something fun to look at. Uh, let's see. And you can use um, scraps. Oh, that's cute. Didn't even know that was there. I was doing it for the pattern part and um, ended up with a little flower. So to decide, I think I'll use the pink petal and the green flower. And then for these, I'll just use the patterned part. All right, so all you have to do is I am gonna quickly um, ink around the edges. And then we're gonna add glue. Um, to one side, you know, of each of the circles and make a sandwich, put the string in the middle, okay? So I'll show you. And the glue will um, smush out um, if you put way too much. Um, so, you know, put enough, but don't go too heavy handed um, or you'll just have a big gluey mess. And it, it squeezes enough that it gets to the edges. See how simple? And make a sandwich. All right. And again, there's a lot of my journals um, I'll do in, in the signatures. I'll dangle little hearts. <laughs> Um, or do some type of uh, button or uh, beads. But these are nice because it, it keeps it really flat, um, the paper does. Okay. Now, we could add pockets, more pockets, <laughs> more pockets. There's always room for pockets, more pockets. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do now is I am going to, I told you I wanted to cut um, these bookmarks out. I'm going to cut one um, again and I can always off camera add more into my pockets um, and de continue decorating if I want to. Um, but this definitely ho hopefully gets you started and gets you thinking about all the possibilities and ideas um, of how you can use up um, pretty scrapbook paper or you know, you could do this even with like a craft paper or a masterboard collage paper, um, printables, you know, if you have digital kits that you've purchased and you print at home, um, you print that onto some card stock. So um, lots of, lots of options with this project. Um, and um, lot, lots of ways you could go. Okay, um, let's see, I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. I am, when I went to grab my coffee dyed paper, I only grabbed two sheets, but I will go ahead and fold one to put in one of the outside pockets. Again, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but to show you. Um, and there's, um, so much, you know, real estate here. 
oh, I didn't trim it short enough. Um, the paper is a little bit longer than my pockets. So there you go, it fits right in. And again, um, I haven't trimmed this one yet, but that would fit in there nicely and close. And then in the back, let's see if we have anything that we could slide in there. Um, again, I think these sweet cards are just a little too wide. Here's that kitty cat that I trimmed. Um, I could trim this up and make him into a tag and put a ribbon on his head. Um, but you know, we could even decorate more um, in any, all parts of this. Um, so many options. All right, lots of space to journal, lots of tuck spots, a beautiful bird. I'd probably add some words, or you guys know me, a quote, <laughs> um, to, to just continue to take it to that next level. But let's see what we've got now that it is um, all put together. Let's see how she looks. All right, um, pretty, pretty hand dyed ribbons, um, lots of tuck spots. Here's our original that we did um, with a loose ribbon closure. This one, as I mentioned, we attached. Um, so your ribbon isn't gonna go anywhere. And there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope um, that, that you'll give give this project a, a try and let me know um, what you made. I would love to see what you made or hear about it. So um, if you enjoyed the video, again, please subscribe and like. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.